Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. Here we have a quite warm day in Vienna and we have the second part of the GNSS or better said GPS uh, signal strength meter. Here you see the populated board. Let me bring it a little bit closer to you. This is how it looks. Of course, I did it off cam because, yeah, for what you want me to see to how to solder. Mm. I don't have a microscope or anything else. It's very difficult. Anyway, anybody knows how to solder. So let me explain you a little bit what the whole thing is. We have a boost converter here that converts the battery voltage to five volts. We have the charging circuit here with the battery protection. Rotary encoder with oops, debouncing. The USB port itself that is used to connect to the new blocks on board USB port and for the charging of the meter. And that's the other side. Nice, huh? 18650 battery. To be honest, I don't know how much, how many million per hours, but quite a lot. The microcontroller in form of an Arduino Nano. As I said, I like it. It's cheap. And this, this module costs much less than the sum of the parts that I would need, would have to pay to make the same functionality that this module gives me of the other side is of course the regulator and the uh, uh, USB connectivity. So I have everything on one board, extremely cheap, under $2. So no discussions here. 3.3 volt regulator for the display. Nothing special. The level converter for the TTL 5 volt to 3.3 volt for the display again for the SPI for the SPI and my board that I made some time ago the design that can be you with that board you can use uh, the Neo 6 the Neo the Neo 5 6 7 8 yeah 8 that's it <laughs> with its own EQC EEPROM for the versions other than 8 that do not have a flash inside. Yeah. Uh, short time retention, data retention, long time data retention. And here we have the USB port. Over voltage protection for the USB port and the antenna connector, the UFL antenna connector. The good thing is with that board, as I said in the previous video, you can have simultaneously, and I will show that, the TTL serial board in use that at the moment goes to the microcontroller. The onboard USB board of the, of the U blocks that needs dedicated drivers, of course, that is connected to this USB port and it's used, this USB port is used for charging and for connecting directly from a PC to the USB port of the U blocks for configuration reasons, etc. So this is how it looks. Uh, the board is designed for a 18650 battery or a LiPo. The connector of the LiPo, you cannot see it because it's it's an OR, either the 18650 or the LiPo. This would be the connector on the other side that's under the battery socket. And we have, we have no focus. <laughs> no, we have a power switch and more or less that's it. Yeah. So let me populate it now to see how this thing looks. Yeah, this is the display I'm using. It's a 2.8 inch display, SPI, 
Very nice display. I use it all the time. So again, I'm not seeing what I'm doing. I hate it when I do that on cam. This is how it looks. And we have the bezel, the front bezel. This is all what is necessary for the front bezel. You have the SMA connector, on off switch, and the openings. So remember, this was the beginning. This nice board here from PCBWay. Thank you very much, PCBWay, for sponsoring these nice PCBs. Again, a matte, beautiful matte color green PCB. And that's the result. And a matte, beautiful matte black front cover, front bezel, however you know, however you say it. So let me put it together and let's continue. And with the magic of a camera, of the filming, we have it already connected. I think it doesn't look bad at all. Yeah, This is a low-cost GPS monitor signal display. This is how it looks. This is the connectivity. The mechanics are, yeah, quite extensive. <laughs> we have a distance to the display itself. The reason is because I want to have the display a little bit lower than the top of the PCB because I plan to put here a plexiglass, a thin half a millimeter plexiglass cover just to protect the, the display itself. Yeah, you have the the power, the, the rotary encoder and distance holders to the main PCB and distance holders to the box, to the casing. And look what I mean with the casing. This is the casing I'm using. It's a potting box that costs half a euro. Guys, 10 by 10 by 40, half a euro. Yeah, I use it quite extensive. I use it for my retest uh, socket boxes and some other projects I made. This is the standard thing I use when I do one off things or just for fast. And the holes I made, I made, I made, I made with that. This is the template I did. For the holes because why okay sorry up this is how it looks because i'm lazy that's all yeah i think it's correct yeah this is how it looks no that's not correct this is how it's correct sorry guys <laughs> anyway even for that i made the pcb this is just i wanted to show you and let's close this thing it is um i think here like that Yep, this is how it looks. This is how it will look as a closed, finished and closed. I will show it to you in a few moments. But first of all, I want to show you the connectivity of that. So let me show you what connections I can show you. I, I, this thing can take, first of all, uh, PC connection and charger. This thing is charging, of course, there is no necessity to turn the microcontroller on. Then we have the SMA. I want to do it somehow so you can see it better. 
Uh, perhaps like that, yeah. Uh, just a little bit more here. Anyway, let's turn it on. And of course you see my, uh, my position again, but as I said in my previous video, my address and my phone numbers in the public registry, so I don't care if you see my coordinates. Yeah. Anyway, UTC time, date, date and time, longitude, lat latitude, longitude, H top and the fix itself. We see how many satellites at the moment are seen. From those seen, how many are used. The average uh, signal to noise ratio is not correct here, but it's easier for you to understand. It says C slash N O. Yeah, it is carrier to mm, noise something. Yeah, anyway. That's the average of each satellite, and that's the total. Yeah, and the bar graph here displays the total. What is here? The, the yellow ones, the yellow ones are the reference ones, the reference values from what you see here. That means this meter is not an absolute meter in no way. Yeah, it would never. Uh, uh, take the place of a, a specialized spectrum analyzer it's, or something at all. But it just shows you a relative value at the moment and relative, relative to the yellow values. How this thing would work? You will take this equipment or this box in a clear sunny day with very good open sky, full open horizon, let it run a few minutes to make it fixes and, and calculate his its 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 uh, parameters, and then you would save these parameters that are the reference parameters to the EEPROM. For example, now at the moment I have eight eight thirty six to ninety. If I want to save this as a reference, I would long press to the rotor encoder. This inversion of the screen shows me that it's saved and you immediately have these values as a reference. So this is, you can see, then you can see, okay, am I doing good or not? So this is an, not an absolute, nothing has to do with not, not an absolute signal measurement, but a relative signal measurement. Well, what else? The encoder itself is, does nothing else then a double click makes a reset of the, of the CPU and the long press is save the reference values for the moment. Yeah. I didn't um, activate it, anything else. Yeah. And you have here charging, but we are already charging and the PPS signal. So let me show you how, what else I can connect to that. So, and that's the second and last connection. We have now connected to the PC. We have connected the new blocks chip, the USB that is connect that is embedded, embedded to the new blocks chip directly to the PC and to the charger. And the, the microcontroller, the Arduino, the Nano, again to the PC for programming it. And let me show you how this thing looks. And of course, the third connection is the internal connection, the serial TTL that goes to the microcontroller and displays you all the stuff. Here you can see the one connection that the PC is directly connected to from to through USB to the on the USB of the new blocks, not on the AVR, not on the nano. And you completely control can control and configure the new blocks chip itself. Go away. Look. You have it here running.
end here. And additionally, the third, the second USB, that's the third interface from this on this box, goes again to the PC directly on the Arduino IDE. Here I have the all the coding. It's only part of the coding because I use a lot of libraries. Ah, and finally, we have the code itself. Yeah, well, it's quite a lot. I'm just showing a little bit of it, a lot of comments, etc. Anyway, that means that this little device has three interfaces at the moment connected. PC to the U center, USB PC to the Arduino ID and internally the serial TTL to the AVR microcontroller. What can I say more? The software, of course, is under development. It is a beta stadium that it works. I can see everything, but it needs a little bit more refinement. Yeah? As I said, it's a beta stadium. So guys, if you like what you see, if you like my designs, if you like my videos, if you like my content, consider subscribing my channel, unfortunately, or men, the most viewers I have are for un not subscribers. I want here to thank, first of all, all my viewers, subscribers or not subscribers. But if you will subscribe, you would help me a lot. Uh, press the like button, the notification button, so you can get informed when I get new videos. Yeah, and let me show you now how it looks in a case. So, this is how it looks in the casing. Cheap, nice casing. Half a euro, guys. Potting box. On. Of course, we don't have a fix at the moment. It just uses its old credentials. Let's connect again the SMA. And turn it on. And we have connection. So this is for now what I can show you. It is a little bit too shiny, the whole thing. I want to find an aluminum casing for that with this depth, 40 millimeters. So, but it make it a little, a little bit more ratchetized, a little more rough, yeah? But this is how it looks. Again, Saving the parameters, resetting, and you have your meter. It's a beta stadium. The software is a beta stadium. There are some very small quirks in the hardware too that I have to check why this happens. But this is how it is. I'm not sure if I will release the design files yet because it's quite a lot. It's software, it's hardware, it's layout, it's, um, yeah. And I will not be able, and, and it's, you need these uh, U-blocks too, yeah? So you need everything. So I don't know yet if I will be able to, to show you what happens here. So that's for today. If you like my videos, Please subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and see you next time. Cheers.